Cool. Well, hey, I'm Matt. It's very nice to see you guys. A uh, little about me. When I'm not doing stand-up, I'm a stay-at-home dad for my two small children back home. Yeah, and I'll tell you fellas right now, if you ever get the opportunity, kill me. <laughs> I'll wait till after the show, that's okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm in no rush. In fact, I need at least a week to finalize the insurance policy, so don't kill me tonight. <laughs> need one more week, anyway. Uh, yeah, it's tough, tough being a stay-at-home dad. Uh, kids really can't do anything. I don't know if anybody else has any kids here, but uh, they can't do shit. Uh, they're very, very uh, useless. Uh, they're cute. They're adorable. They're very, very cute. That's about it. Took my three-year-old a full year just to learn how to walk. <laughs> Worse, turns out that's normal. I was like, damn, <laughs> that's pretty bad. That, especially when you consider, when I turn on the Nature Channel, hmm. <laughs> I watched a horse get born. <laughs> After 30 seconds, <laughs> it gets up, shakes itself off, and gallops the fuck away. Moves out, gets work, starts sending checks home. <laughs> Finds a carriage to pull, auditions, and Budweiser. I don't know anything about horses. <laughs> but I know this, a human baby cannot even survive without its parents until it is 30 years old. <laughs> so. It's gonna be a long haul, guys. I got a, I got a three-year-old, I got a four-month-old now that I'm taking care of. I'm the primary caretaker of a four-month-old baby. So pass the cocaine, as I like to say. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not sleeping too well. If you have any blow, just toss it on up. <laughs> anyway, people don't get it, you know. A friend of mine was like, I feel fantastic, Matt. I slept like a baby last night. I was like, really, in 20-minute increments? You dick. <laughs> Rubbing it in, you feel fantastic. Anyway, I do say, uh, you know, there's some, there's some upsides, you know, some surprises, a lot of surprises. Uh, like, uh, I carry the kid around, the four month old, put him in the pouch, walk around with him uh, all throughout the city. You know what happens? All the single women just walk up and talk to me. Oh, this is a hell of a time for that to start happening. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you very much. I should have had a baby in high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> Things weren't working out for me too well in high school. I, uh, you know, I looked a lot like I look now. It's like the scrawny ass results of a one night stand between Conan O'Brien and Doogie Howser. <laughs> How's my butt doing, by the way, guys? Is it good? Is it good? All right, cool. Anyway. It's an iffy time to raise kids, right? It's an iffy time to have kids. You know, when hasn't it been an iffy time? Feels like it's getting iffier, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Feels like it's getting a little iffier, you know? Like, Russia's hacking our elections. Nobody seems to give a shit. Russia's in. I just saw on a paper recently, all 17 United States intelligence agencies agree that Russia is hacking our elections. And I saw that, I was like, oh my god. There are 17 United States intelligence agencies? <laughs> Seems like an awful lot of intelligence for a mm, pretty stupid country. I don't know if we... 17. Three or four ought to do it, I think, right? It's, you know, a lot of them we've never even heard of. Like, what, what, what have we got? We've got the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the CSI, uh, CSI Miami, <laughs> NCIS. We've got NCIS New Orleans now. A special victims unit somewhere. <laughs> oh, what? Then you got your next generation Deep Space Nine, Discovery, Explorer, Enterprise. <laughs> Mork and Mindy, was that a spin off? Wait, what am I talking about? I don't know. We're stupid people, that's what I guess I'm proving. I don't know. Facts are gone. Facts, facts are gone. Uh, you know, we used to have facts when I was a kid. We had the facts of life. Uh, was that? No, okay. Uh, but facts, there are no more. You know, I think that there are three kinds of facts, personally. This is my theory. There are facts, just regular old facts. Those are true. And then there are alternative facts, which are false. <laughs> and then there are fun facts. I mean, those are my favorite. Right there. Hell yeah, you know why? Nobody verifies fun facts. Nobody does. 
Lee cares at all about fun facts. And I know that because I am also, on the weekends, part-time tour guide on the National Mall, and I am full of fun facts, guys. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Oh, hell yeah. Told a group last week that Benjamin Franklin assassinated Adolf Hitler. <laughs> And they were Trump supporters, so they were like, Whoa, that guy did everything! Oh my God! Did you know that? But they gave me a hundred dollar tip, so I was like, fuck it, this isn't part of the tour now. <laughs> it's part of the tour. I'm in it for the money. I don't care. Anyway, it's weird. It's just, it's just, the world's changing. You know, can't watch old movies anymore without like seeing it all through a new lens, right? Can't watch old movies. Uh, uh, you know, I was watching Superman. Right? Doesn't get any more pure than Superman. It's a pretty messed up uh, situation there, Superman. Uh, he was asked by Lois Lane, why are you here? You guys remember what he said? Some of you surely do. Call it out, right? He's here, he says, I'm here to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. I watched that recently, I was like, hmm, that's a little funny. He's an alien. He's <laughs> from another planet. That's. It's a little strange. I'm supposed to believe this guy flew halfway across the universe only to get here and be xenophobic? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And besides that, like his dad sent him like to Earth, like he's here to fight for the American way. means his dad like sent him to the United States in particular. <laughs> Doesn't that just seem to the doesn't that seem unrealistic? Like, like his wife is like, hey, so honey, you're gonna send him to Earth. That's cool. Which country? The one that needs his help the least. <laughs> yes, where he will literally have to get a full-time job. He will have nothing to do. He just, his job has nothing to do with fighting crime. You know, as a journalist, yeah, it's an important thing. But Jesus, he's, he can fly and he's bulletproof. My God. And then I thought, my God, what does it even mean? You know, what does that even mean, the American way? What is that? It's like intentionally vague. It's like, I'm here to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. Well, I don't know what you mean when you say the American way, Superman, but I can infer that there are definitely two things you think are not part of the American way, and those would be truth and justice, because he specifically <laughs> lists those separately. Man, that's Superman. I mean, jeez, what else are we gonna lose these days anyway? And his dad, Jarrell, you guys remember Jarrell? His dad, why did he send him to Earth in the first place? Because of climate change on Krypton. <laughs> Jesus. What rotten luck. You'd think that'd be the first thing that he'd be looking out for when he got here. Like, okay, how's the climate? Is the climate okay? Is the climate all right? My dad was a climate scientist. And Senator, his dad was, his dad, Jor-El was his name. They invented this character in the 1930s. They named him Jor-El. Clap if you can verify this for me. This is a fun fact that is true, but thank you, that's true, so we can, we can move forward. Uh, yeah, they created this character in the 30s, named him Jor-El, Jor-El, it's a hyphenated name, and he's a climate scientist, and he's a senator on Krypton, can't convince the Kryptonian Senate <laughs> to take action. His name is Jor-El. Jor Al. Gore Al. Gore Al. How did they do that? So Superman is out. I can't watch that movie anymore. All right. Anyway, I'm getting paranoid these days in my older age, trying to raise kids and paranoid. I had to quit smoking weed. Thank you for your fucking support. <laughs> Thank you, Washington. They're legalizing. It's the worst time to quit smoking weed. This would be like quitting smoking cigarettes between like 1650 and 2007. You know, this would be a terrible time to quit smoking weed. But I gotta, if you knew me, you'd be supportive because I just, you know, I do some terrible things when I smoke weed. Like this past summer, I watched the same Major League Baseball game twice in a row and I didn't notice until it was all over. <laughs> Shouldn't be possible, folks. No. Uh, at first, I was excited. I was like, oh, damn, that's the same guy that hit the big game winning home run in the first game of this doubleheader. Did you see that kid? Damn. That's, my goodness, off the same pitcher. What an asshole he must feel like right now. Yeah. Shit, kid, I think the same fan caught the ball in the bleachers. <laughs> Did you see that kid? Kid? Where's the kid? Honey? Oh, my God. You found him. He was at the dealers. The real problem, of course, was I got so high this one time. Uh, God, I got so high, I agreed to be a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 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 
an MLK. So that's a good guy. We got yeah, Mike was talking about MLK Day is coming up. That's exciting. But uh, you know, I've always wondered about the uh, the Martin Luther King Day mattress sale. <laughs> and what's the deal with that? Everywhere, everywhere I've lived, there's always a Martin Luther King Day mattress sale. And then I realized it hit me. He had a dream. <laughs> That's my time. You guys have been wonderful. Happy New Year, everybody.